Hello all. So this tutorial is a culmination of what we have been doing in the previous tutorials. So our aim is to do some image processing. We'll be trying edge detection. At the end of edge detection, we should be able to see the output on our monitor. So there should be some provision using which I should be able to see the original image as well as the image after processing on the monitor okay so i'm going through all the steps here especially hardware design those who missed any of the previous tutorial for completeness and all the source code will be available to you uh, through the git repository so i'm starting a new project and let's call it image processing video display You're using that board or practically you can use this code for any of the zinc devices if you don't have zinc devices you can use other fpgs also but instead of the processing system you'll have to use some soft processor like microblaze so let's go ahead and create the block design so let's call it system as the block design and the first thing we need to do is to configure our IP repository. So we'll go to settings. I'm going to use uh, my own IP for doing the edge detection, which we developed previously. So we'll go to repository and I will add my path to the repository. When I post this in Git, I will have a script file which will do all these things for you. So don't worry. So we'll have IP repo. Okay, now we will start with adding our processor. So we have Zing processing system. We'll run block automation for connecting DDR as well as other fixed input outputs. Now let's go ahead and do the image processing part. So remember for image processing, we have to stream data from the external DDR through our IP core through XE DMA controller. So let's go ahead and add the XI DMA controller, which is a memory map stream device. So we just want to uh, use the simple mode so we can disable scatter gather mode this width defines how much data you can transfer in one shot let's put the largest value and check this option allow unaligned transfer and say okay let's bring our ip here which is called sobel so he has the stream interface so this m axis mm to s i am going to connect here and this is the output but output is only 7 bit and here the stream input is 32 bit so let's add a width converter ip core width should be xc for stream data width converter okay so master interface width is 32 bits so 4 bytes slave interface he will automatically detect it is 1 byte so let's connect it here and the master interface we can connect to this interface okay now uh, connection automation he will be running uh, an automation for connecting the clock and reset okay so let's go ahead and run connection automation so all clocks and reset are connected now remember we are going to connect our system to a display so the controller for that display will have to run a very particular clock frequency depending upon the display resolution so we are going to run at 1080p 
resolution on the monitor so the clock frequency should be 148.5 but the default clock coming from our processor it is 100 megahertz so this 100 megahertz we need to convert to 148 uh, it will be better if our entire system runs on that clock so that there is a complete synchronization which will uh, help us to save resources also so what i'm going to do is i am bringing a clock wizard which will help us to change the frequency so the input clock frequency is 100 megahertz and output clock frequency we need 148.5 and this reset signal we can remove we don't want to reset the clock generator okay now the input to the clock is 100 megahertz coming from the processor so this output from the processor i'm disconnecting and that i'm going to connect to my clock wizard and the output from this clock wizard will be connected to all other ip codes Okay, so he is the only one driving the clock. Similarly, the lock signal from the clock wizard, which is saying the clock has been locked and it is stable, the output clock, let's connect it here to the reset generator so that he keeps our entire system under reset mm -hmm. until uh, the clock from clock wizard becomes stable. Okay, so that part is done. Now we need to connect uh, the DMA to the external DDR through the PS. For that, we need to enable one of the high performance ports. So let's go ahead and choose HP port and uh, let's enable HP 0, 64 bit wide. And you can run connection automation and you will see these two interfaces. They will get connected with the HP port. So run connection automation, HP. Clock source, okay, so clock wizard output instead of auto, let's, let's choose that or he may connect to the 100 megahertz. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so now you can see the output here. It got connected here, so we have one more. So let's run connection automation once again. Clock source again, 148.5 megahertz. So these two, they got connected with the smart interconnect, whose output got connected to the HP port. And all the clocks are connected with the output of the clock wizard. So this reset also we need to connect to here. Okay, so the, now the only thing that is left is the interrupt signal from our IP core, which we need to connect to the PS. Okay, so that we will do uh, after a few moments. Uh, let's bring the video controller part. So this is the image processing part. Now we will do the video uh, interface part. So first thing we will bring the video timing controller. And we can disable this light interface since we are not planning for runtime reconfiguration. We just want to generate video signal, not detect. So you can disable this part. And here we can specify our intertext resolution, 1080p. And we can just say OK. Now the output clock, we can connect it to the output from the clock generator. Clock enable, we can permanently make it high. So we can bring a constant IP on this. Okay, and reset, we can connect to this reset. Okay, so that's about video timing generator. Now we need to bring 
the XE4 stream to video out IP. So let's call video out XE4 stream to video out IP. Okay. So this timing out we can directly connect here. Clock we can directly connect. Clock enable again we can permanently make it one. This one also permanently make it one. And this out CE we need to connect here. And video output okay, so these are the signals going out from that H sync and V sync. You can directly make it as external signal. Now this video data, we need to do a multiplexing. We need to make sure the output data is zero whenever there is no valid video signal. So for that, let me quickly write a small multiplexer. So let's call max.v. And we can say input i control signal input if we down to zero we have i data we have output data okay 24 bits and we can say assign o data is i control if it is one, we will make I data as O data. Otherwise, O data will be 24 bit zero. Okay, so that's our box. Now we can simply drag and drop it to our block design. And the output we will connect to I data and active video. This signal is saying like video signal is a active video signal, otherwise it will be zero during horizontal and vertical blanking and sinking duration. So we need this. Now it is 24 bit, 8 bit per color channel, but on the board we have only 4 bit. So we need to use a slice IP only four bit from this bit so let's bring the slice IP here and let's say our input data width is 24 output is 3 down to 0 and uh, that represent our R channel this one is R, so let's rename it as VGA underscore R. So same way we need for G as well as B. So this is G. And it is 11 down to 8. And this is for B. That is 19 down to 16. Only lower four bits from each channel. Okay, so that part is done. Let's rename them also. This is a green. And this is table. So maybe this we can just call it H sync and V sync also. 
Okay, so that part is done. Now the input video that is going to come from the DDR memory and to access DDR, we are going to use uh, VDMA IP from Xilinx again, a specialized IP, video DMA IP. So let's add VDMA, video direct access memory. And here we only want to read from memory so we can disable the right channel. We are going to use only one frame buffer because we just have image, not any video. And uh, here stream data width 24 bits RGB memory map is fine. And here choose allow unlined transfers once again. Okay, so that's about VDMA. Now its stream output should be directly connected to the video input here. And uh, the Axie light interface should be connected to the GP port and this should be connected to the HP port. Okay, so again you can either run uh, automation or you can do it uh, manually also. For example, we have Axie interconnect here. He has only one master interface, so we can make it uh, two master interfaces. And this master interface we can connect to the Axie light. Similarly, all the clocks we can connect. Okay, and the reset signal. To the peripheral reset here. And this one, MM2S, we need to connect to the HP port. So up to you, you can enable another HP port here because the first HP port is used by this DMA also, or you can use the same HP port. Uh, doesn't matter. So what you have to do is in the interconnect here smart interconnect we need to enable one more slave interface and this signal we can connect here okay so let's see what is left ps7 uh, axi peripheral m axi clock okay so this clock so this also we can connect and this reset that also we can connect. Okay, so either you can run connection automation, but uh, this case you should be very careful where he's connecting the clock signal. So make sure instead of choosing auto, you choose the clock source as the output of the clocking wizard, not as the output from the processor. Okay, so now the only stuff that is left is the interrupt signals. So we need interrupt from this DMA controller, this DMA controller, as well as from our IP core. So we have three interrupt signals coming and we need to connect them to the interrupt controller of Zing. So we need to go here and we can choose interrupts and uh, PSPL interrupt, we can enable it, enable here also. Okay. Now we need to combine all these interrupt signals together and give it as a bus here. For that we need the concat IP. So we have three interrupts to combine. So let's say the number of input ports is three. So the interrupts are from uh, Axie DMA. We are connecting only stream to memory map interrupt. To know like he has finished processing the image we also want to connect interrupt from our ip core so the order really doesn't matter and from vdma also we need to connect the interrupt and finally connect the output of concat ip with the interrupt of the processor okay so this completes our Hardware design, that's it. So we have a somewhat moderately complex 
system you save your block design and check for any error through validate design and in the address editor this time you can see some of the addresses are not mapped because we didn't run connection automation we did it manually so if this is the case we need to go and check this one auto assign addresses so now all addresses are assigned and uh, rerun okay so this t last those warnings are fine and this warning and there is a problem sxc from sobel and uh, dma mm to s are not matching okay so that is a mistake so here stream data width we chose 32 but our ip it is only 8 bits so we need to correct that and save again and okay so now only warning is there is no t last signal coming from our ip which is connected to xcdma that is perfectly fine because this is an optional signal so now you can go ahead and uh, create hdl wrapper and you can synthesize and uh, add the pin constraint because we have output pins here so we need to give pin location for these signals now that you can do after synthesis since i have constraints from my previous project i'm directly copy pasting it so i will say like uh, create constraints and uh, i can just say system.xdc file finish and I copy paste it from my previous project. Only difference is these names I changed to just hsync and vsync. Let's change that. Otherwise, all of the constraints remain the same. Okay, so now you can just go ahead and uh, generate bitstream and export it to SDK. So this is the corresponding software code for our image processing com video display system. So I have I have made a new structure which is representing our image processing IP and all the attributes of image processing is stored here. So we have a pointer to the array where image is stored. We have another pointer where the processed image should be stored. We have a pointer to the DMA controller use for this image processing we have a pointer to the intro controller we have the information about the image resolution and we have this variable which is basically saying whether image processing is completed or not okay so this is the uh, structured way of writing uh, proper drivers so this one is additional otherwise the code is uh, just a combined code for image processing that we did before and the video processing that we did later okay so again this is the array for lena and uh, here you can see yeah i'm using my new structure to create a instance from that then doing memory allocation for storing the processed image I am doing dynamic memory allocation, so remember to increase the size of heap here. Then we are storing the information about uh, image size and the point is to this buffer, everything to this instance. And I am calling these functions, okay? So one function is to <clears throat> initialize it and one function to start it. So these functions, again, they are stored in another zip file here called the image process.c. So here I have the functions for starting the image processing, basically starting the DMA to the image processing IP and uh, initializing the image processing IP. And finally, the function for copying image from image array to our video buffer. Okay. So this we have seen before, but I have fully parameterized it so that we can use the same function for grayscale image 
or color image for both of you will be able to use it. So some additional features. Now what happens is once that image processing is over, we have this done variable inside the image process structure that will get set. Okay, so that is done by the interrupt service routine here. This one. So when we get the final interrupt from the DMA controller saying like he has completely transferred the image from the image processing IP to memory, this uh, ISR will be called and this ISR is setting this variable. And we are waiting until that variable becomes one. And once that variable becomes high, we will start the VDMA controller for transferring uh, data to the VGA interface. Okay, so this is the main part of the code. So here what happens is through our Teratum uh, serial terminal, we'll have two options. One option to see the original image and another option is to see the processed image. So based on your choice, uh, he will either transfer the data stored in the image data array, which is the original image of our learner, or he will transfer the processed image which is stored in the filtered image. So this is another array which was passed to the image processor. So he'll be storing the processed image in this array. Okay, so you'll be able to see uh, either the original one or the processed one on the screen. Okay, so I already have the bitstream generated. I have already exported it. So now let's program it and see the output. So you can see the option here to choose between original or edge detected image. So let me choose one, enter. And this is what you see on the monitor. Now let me choose the second option. And now you can see the edge detected image. Okay, so since we are using a single buffer, you can actually see the image transition when we are changing the option that is all about this tutorial so again i'll be sharing all the code in git so please check the description and the system i'll be sharing it as a tickle script for regenerating the vivado project so if you haven't watched the previous tutorial how to regenerate the Vivado project from the Tickle script. So please do watch it. I'll also share the Bitstream so that you can directly program the FPGA without going through Vivado. Okay, thank you.